Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, I'd like to spend some time uh, solving very simple problems related to circles. Uh, by now, we have accumulated enough theoretical material to, to start solving problems, which is basically the main purpose of the whole you know, exercise with website and uh, all this uh, educational uh, material which we are providing on unizor.com. Um, again, uh, you remember that creativity is the ultimate goal of uh, studying mathematics. So solving problem is the, the way how you basically um, uh, create certain things. Um, it's very important that you try to solve certain problems which you have not solved before. Because that's exactly what's supposed to develop your, your creativity. That's the purpose, right? OK, um, so um, construction problems in geometry are very much in, in line with this idea of creativity, how to construct something uh, using whatever the tools you have. And you know the tools are compass and uh, straight edge uh, ruler. All right, so um, a few construction problems related to circle. Very simple, by the way. Um, I am delaying with all the real complex problems until later when all the theoretical material will be completed. All right. So, number one, divide in half an arc in a circle. All right, so if you have a circle and an arc from here to here, and you have to divide it in half, well, obviously, you connect it with a chord, and you drop the perpendicular from the center, and continue, thus making a diameter, actually. And if you remember, uh, diameter is um, the axis of symmetry of, uh, of a circle, which means the left part is symmetrical to the right part. Now, all the points uh, on the left side of this arc are symmetrical to corresponding points on the right. Why? Because this one, this point, has exactly the same distance from the diameter as this point, as we have proven many times before. Um, well, just in case, uh, if you don't remember, you can always connect the ends of the chord, of this chord, and uh, these two triangles have common side and equal uh, in length hypotenuses because they are walls, radiuses of the circle. So triangles are uh, congruent, which means that these particular uh, uh, legs uh, are equal in length. And so for every other pair of points which you can obtain by drawing a perpendicular anywhere in this particular area, which means that the entire left part of the arc is symmetrical to the right part and that basically proves that we have divided by this point this arc into uh, congruent parts. In this case, congruency is um, basically established by uh, reflection relative to the axis. Okay, next. Find a center of a circle. Well, I did mention actually this problem many times. If you have a circle, just pick up a couple of points, and you know that the center is supposed to be on a perpendicular bisector between these two points. Now, have another pair of points, let's say this and this. Again, draw a chord and draw another perpendicular bisector. And on the crossing, you will have the center of the circle. Um, that's it. And by the way, it doesn't really depend on what kind of points we have chosen, as long as it's just three different points. Uh, construct a tangent to a given circle, the given point of their intersection. So if you have a tangent which has one and only one, by definition, single point of intersection with a circle. Now, how to construct this particular tangent if you know only the point. Well, obviously, if you remember, since tangent has one and only one point of intersection, 
that's the shortest distance from a center, because on a circle you have all the different uh, points uh, which are distance at the, at the same distance basically from the center, the radius. Everything outside uh, has the distance from uh, the center greater than the radius. So um, this particular radius to the point where uh, our tangent intersects with, uh, with the circle is the shortest point from this line. So the way to, to construct it is if you have only the point, you have, uh, you have to draw a radius to this point from the center, and then the perpendicular line uh, to this radius at this particular point is a tangent. And uh, by the way, I don't want to stop on how to uh, construct a perpendicular to a line at a certain point. We already covered that in previous lectures. Next. Construct the tangent to a given circle from a given point outside of a circle. Okay, so again, you have a circle, and you have to construct a tangent if you have this point. So the tangent is not there. Tangent is the one which is supposed to be constructed. You have a point, and you have a circle, and a center, obviously. Now, this is a little bit more tricky. Uh, yes, we still know that this particular point should be found where the radius is perpendicular to the line. So we have to find out somehow how to draw this line if we have only one point. We don't have any other points. We don't have the tangent. But let's recall that since this is a perpendicular, now, if you remember, uh, if you have an inscribed angle which is supported by a diameter, it's always 90 degrees. Why? Because it's always half of a central angle, and central angle in this case, which is supported by the same, uh, by the same arc, is 180 degrees. So any inscribed angle which is supported by the diameter is uh, the right angle. Now, this is also a right angle, right? And if we will draw a circle with this as a diameter, and we do know this particular segment because we know the, the, the circle with its center, and we know the point, the tangent is supposed to pass through. So we have this, so we can actually build a circle on this segment as a diameter. Well, how? Just divide it in half and, and then use this as a radius. Now, since this is a circle with this as a diameter, then any right angle which is using this as a hypotenuse has to be on this circle. So basically, this is a locus. Of all the tri of all the vertices of a right triangles with this as a hypotenuse. Back to this uh, particular drawing. If you have a diameter, then the, then the circle around this diameter is a locus of all the vertices of all the different right triangles which have this diameter as a hypotenuse. Now, this particular triangle is the one which has this as a hypotenuse, which means that now we can find this point as an intersection between this circle, which we know since we know its diameter, and the main circle from which we have started. Well, actually, there are two points, right? So this point will serve as well. We can draw two different tangents from one point to this particular circle, using this technique. So again, we use the segment between these two points, the center and the given point, as a diameter, draw a circle, and every point on that circle has the property that a triangle uh, is the right triangle, which means one of these is the one which we are looking for. 
So this particular point should have the property of being on that circle and at the same time being on that circle. That's why it's on the crossing of these two circles. So we have two points, two points of intersection. And that means that we know the point where our tangent is supposed to touch uh, the circle. Well, since we know the point, we just draw a line here and draw a line here. And these are two tangents, which are two solutions to our problem. What was actually the creative moment in this particular uh, little problem? The creative moment was to realize that there is certain property um, characteristic for this particular picture. The property that this is, the right triangle, and the locus of all the right triangles can be built using this as a diameter. So this is a creative part. So you have to think about how to find this particular point, because since you don't have it, you have to find it using certain technique. So this is a creative moment. You have to realize that this point is supposed to belong to two different curves. One is, it's obviously on our initial, uh, initial circle, and secondly, it should belong to the locus of all the points which have the right angle at the top, and supported by this as a diameter. Construct a right triangle, ins sorry, inscribe a right triangle into a circle given the length of one capitus. All right, so we have to inscribe, inscribe the right triangle, and as we know many times, repeated, all the right triangles are supported by the diameter. So if we know the circle, obviously we know its diameter, and then any point on this circle um, can be used as a vertex of the right triangle. This, this, etc. Now, we are interested in the right triangle with, with a given catapus. Well, that's actually simple. You take this length, use this as a center, mark this. You can actually mark this too. So you have two triangles with this particular size of the catapus. You can actually do exactly the same thing from another uh, end of the diameter and have this and this, two points again, so you have again two different solutions. So we have four different solutions uh, for any given, well, not for any given. Obviously, if this is too big, then you will just go outside of a circle. So obviously, there are certain restrictions on the size, but if the size is... Uh, if the size is less than a diameter, then the crossing will always be found. So again, we have a circle, we have a diameter, any diameter, and from both ends you can use this uh, as, as, a, uh, as, a, as a radius of, of your compass, and then have all these four points uh, will, will be vertices, vertices of the, uh, the right triangles which we are looking for. That's simple. Construct a circle of a given radius tangent to both rays of a given angle. So you have an angle, and you have to inscribe a circle so both rays are tangent, but you are given the radius of this circle. Now obviously these are two perpendiculars since these are tangents so the lines, the segments from the center to the uh, point of, uh, of, of touching the tangent with the, with the circle are perpendicular. So these are perpendiculars. Now radiuses are given, right? Okay, but this is now a really simple thing. Since radius is given, it means that this point is on this distance from this line. Now, what is the locus of all the points on a certain distance from the line? You just draw a parallel line, which has the distance uh, between these parallel lines, a given uh, segment, right? 
So, we don't know this point, but we do know that it's supposed to be located on this line, which is parallel to this line, and uh, on a distance, which is our radius. Now, similarly, this same point is supposed to be on the same distance from this line, which means, again, we draw a parallel line on this distance, and the crossing of these two parallel lines is the point where the center of the, uh, of, of the, of the circle is supposed to be located. Since this point belongs to this line, this perpendicular is equal to our r, and since, since this point is on this line, the length of this perpendicular is always r, which means that if you will use this as a center and draw a circle of radius r, it will touch both rays uh, in one particular point for each. So that would be tangents. All right, that was easy to <clears throat> Inscribe a circle into a triangle. All right. So we have a triangle, and we have to inscribe a circle so it's tangent, it's tangent to to each line, to each side of the circle. Well, let's think again. If you will use the center and draw all three perpendiculars, let's think again where exactly this center is supposed to be located. If you have a triangle, um, well, obviously, if you draw this particular line, it will bisect this angle. Why? Because these two uh, uh, triangles, this one and this one, uh, are supposed to be um, congruent. Now, why? Well, because these are two radiuses, right? And this is a common hypotenuse. So these two triangles are congruent, which makes these two angles congruent to each other. So it looks like this particular point, the center of an inscribed uh, circle into a triangle, is supposed to lie on the bisector of this angle. And similarly, it's supposed to lie on the bisector of this angle, and this angle. So you take two bisectors of the uh, triangle, angle bisectors of a triangle, and you will get the inscribed, uh, the center of an ins inscribed circle. And obviously the third one is supposed to be crossing the first couple of pair, uh, the pair of uh, bisect bisectors in exactly the same point. That can be very easily shown. So let's just repeat again. If you have a triangle and you want to inscribe a circle into it, you have to use angle bisectors. If you want to circumscribe a triangle, which we did before actually, now if it's a cir circumscribed circle, then as you know, the center is supposed to be equally distanced from all three vertices which means it's supposed to lie on a perpendicular bisector of each side. So inscribed with the bisectors, circumscribed circle is on the crossing of perpendicular bisectors of all sides. As you see, all these problems are really very, very simple. Uh, construct a line tangent to two given circles. All right. So we have two given circles, one and another. And we have to draw a tangent to both of them. Well, obviously, we can draw another one on this side. All right. How can we do it? Um, here is what we can say. Now, these are two perpendiculars to the same line, right? So the radius to the point of touching of tangent is perpendicular to the tangent, which means they are parallel to each other. Now, 
let's bring the whole line, the tangent line, down by this distance. What happens? If you have this R and this R, and you do this, and you will have a circle here with a radius of R minus R. Now, this line relative to, to this circle is shifted down. And as you see, this circle of the radius uh, big R minus small r would be actually um, uh, would be actually touched by this line, which we shifted down, and the line would be this line would be also tangent to this. Now, why it's why it's tangent? Well, because since we parallelly we shift parallel down, which means that this used to be a perpendicular, and this would be a perpendicular, right? So we have a line which is perpendicular to the radius, and it's on this particular distance which is equal to the radius. So we have subtracted from r, we have our big r, we subtracted small r, we have this r minus r. So basically what I'm saying is that the new line, which is dotted, is tangential to a smaller circle of the radius equal to the difference between radius is a big and small circle. Now, can we build this line, the dotted line? Yes, we can, because since we know both circles, we know both radiuses, that's why we know, we know the difference between them. So we can draw a circle concentric to the big one with the radius of r minus r. So this circle can be constructed very easily. Now, but this is a point now. This is a center of a smaller circle, which means from a point, we know how to draw a tangent to a smaller circle. So that's how we build the whole thing. We draw a smaller uh, circle inside the big one with the radius of big R minus small r. And from a center of a small uh, circle, we draw a tangent. So, since we know how to do this, we know this point. As soon as we know this point, we just continue this particular line, and then we continue, and then we draw this line parallel to this line. So we get this point, and we get this point. And these are two points which are supposed to be where our uh, tangent, which we have to construct, is touching two circles, two given circles. All right, so again, first we build the difference between two radiuses, this minus this, subtract it, use the difference as a radius, concentric to the big R, and then from the center of a small circle, we draw a tangent, get this point, now, how to draw a tangent from a point to a given circle, we already know in the previous problem, which we have solved. And then just uh, along, uh, along this particular line, we find one point, and this is a parallel, we find another point. It's a little less uh, trivial, I would say. This fact that you have to you know, shift the whole thing down by this radius is, again, uh, a guess which you really have to make to simplify your problem and not just to simplify, but to reduce it to, to the one that you have already uh, solved before. Actually, that's how everything is solved. You reduce your big, complex problem to a smaller one, which you have already solved before. And then go back. All right. <coughs> Inscribe a square into a given circle. OK, so you have a circle. And you have to find four points which make a square. Well, how can you do it? This is actually easy. Obviously, if you connect this to this, and this to this, you know we will get the center of a square, right? So, the way how you build this particular square is the following. 
you have a circle, you have a diameter, put a perpendicular diameter through the center, and basically connect. Now, how to prove this is a circle? Well, very easily. I mean, all these triangles are congruent to each other. They are all right and equilateral uh, and, uh, sorry, and isosceles. And so you have all these angles, 45 degrees, this is 90 degrees. So all these angles are 90 degrees and all these sides are equal to each other. So two perpendicular diameters will give you um, a square. Okay, we know how to inscribe a square into a circle. Okay, how to inscribe a regular hexagon into a circle? Well, hexagon, it might be a little more difficult. This is something like this. Well, you can say that this is a diameter. Well, yes, it is, but now you have to divide this piece into three equal parts, which is not easy, right? Well, but actually it is quite easy. Let's think about it. Since this is a regular hexagon, since this is a regular hexagon, hexagon now all these are equal to the radius, right? And all these angles are equal to 360 divided by 6, which is 60. All of them are 60. Which makes these also 60. Which makes every triangle equilateral. Which means if this is R, then this is also R. So these chords are equal to the radiuses. All chords and all radiuses, they are all the same. Now, how to build the hexagon? Very simply. Just take a point, and using this radius, just put all these chords. And that would give you the regular hexagon. Because this is equal to the radius. This side is equal to the radius. So that's how you inscribe hexagon. That's a, the simplest. It, it's probably even simpler than to inscribe a square. Because there you have to draw a perpendicular. Here you just don't have to draw anything. Just put the points, one after another, all six points, which are vertices of, of the hexagon. Uh, again, let me just stop a little bit. What was the constructive moment in this particular case? Is just to do this little research and basically find out that the length of the side of the hexagon is exactly the same as the radius. As soon as you know that, the construction itself is simple. So you have to really have some kind of a research first to like how to approach the problem. But once you know, to solve it is really easy. And um, the last one, inscribe an equilateral triangle. So equilateral triangle, inscribe into a circle. Well, that might not be actually as easy as, as hexagon, or, or, or is it? Um, well, the way how I suggest you to solve this problem is very easy. First, inscribe hexagon. And you know how to do that. And then connect every other point. Just skip one. One, skip two, three, skip four, five, skip six, gain one. And this would be your regular uh, equilateral triangle. Uh, again, a little guess that instead of just thinking about What's the length of this particular side? It's, it's complicated. I don't know what the length of this side, just off the top of my head. I have to some, do some kind of calculations, some kind of maybe additional constructions. It, it's difficult. But if I have just 
guessed that providing you know how to do the hexagon, the regular uh, triangle, the, the equilateral triangle is actually uh, can be obtained by connecting uh, points, uh, vertices of, uh, of the hexagon, just skipping every, other, uh, uh, skipping every other one, well, then the problem is easy. All right, so uh, I just want to emphasize how important it is to think about how to approach the problem. Construction problems in geometry are very, very much like this. You just think about this, and then the situation actually clarifies, and the construction itself is simple. You just have to know how to do it, and how to do it, how to do it is actually requiring a certain level of you know, thinking, creativity, and, uh, and guessing, if you wish, or something. And the more problems you solve, by the way, the more proficient you will be in this particular you know, art of, uh, of solving these problems. Because actually, if you think about it, the, the number of methods of solving the different problems is really finite. So the more you solve, the more you enrich yourself in, in this methodology, and you will always be able to, to, to basically choose from one which you have already done before as a method to at least approach uh, the, the, new, the new problems. Every new problem might actually be solved by certain combination of the methods which you have already used before solving other problems. So the more you solve, the better you will be off. And all the problems in the world we are planning to put on unizor.com, special attention for uh, parents who would like to supervise their uh, children's study in mathematics. Uh, it allows you to uh, enroll your children in certain programs. Um, then exams actually can be taken by, by the students, and uh, you as parents can actually examine the results and mark the particular topic as uh, completed. Or ask again, do it like again, do the lectures again, do the exercises again, and do the exam again until it's perfect. All right, that's it for today. Thank you very much.